Hello everyone, I'm Kate, I'm the Head of User Support and the Meteorologist from Windy App, and I'm very happy to welcome you to this webinar. I decided to divide all the tools um, to track severe weather into three categories. We're moving on to the low effort tools. So first of all is wind alerts. You set them up once and then they run forever until you turn them off. So you have to set up uh, the wind speed, the wind direction, and uh, the preferred time window for the, uh, for the wind you are expecting. And then you'll get a push notification saying uh, this date, this time, this, this wind is coming. And uh, one tip from me is when you, before you set up an, an alert for a certain spot, I encourage you to look at the mini map because it shows you what the spot is like, what's the orientation of the coast, basically help you choose which wind directions actually work for you because you don't want to be notified anytime there's wind of a certain strength you might want to be notified for example if there's only uh, onshore winds like in this example and then the weather fidgets you, i probably don't need to explain them to you you just set them up for any number of spots and then they update automatically so you know the most recent forecast and when you start seeing red and yellow uh, wind speeds in this windy bar, then you know it's uh, time to check the full forecast. You just click on the widget and then it will open the app uh, for that spot and uh, the detailed forecast for it. The same goes for iOS, uh, but they also have lock screen widgets and you, you wouldn't even need to unlock your phone to see the most recent data, which I think is kind of cool. We support the Apple Watch and we have a widget also. This is a video uh, that my colleague created with his Apple Watch showing you around, basically. You can change the time step from one hour to three hours. You can choose the model. Uh, you can choose the parameter. So there's wind, there's swell, there's wind and swell combined. And, now, and you can also scroll uh, to um, fast forward the forecast for uh, days ahead. Now, the windy bar and favorites, I wanted to highlight this feature because it's, I think it's one of the easiest way to check the wind. You will see colors and you will immediately understand, for example, that the weekend will be windy or the weekend will not be windy. So, and then you, will, you can scroll uh, to that particular date and see um, the details. But one other thing for quick access and for watching uh, multiple spots at a time. You can add them to favorites or with this little star icon at the top. And then um, for iOS users, you can even choose what parameter to display on the so-called windy bar. You can see pressure, you can see temperature, you can see snow, you can see swell energy. So whatever you need, you can uh, set up for your spots. And once again, if you see something that's requires um, your attention uh, on those favors you just click and it opens the spot so now i want to move on to the mid-level tools for severe weather and um, i would use them when i already have a forecast in mind for tomorrow let's say or for today but i want to make sure that the weather actually is what it was forecasted I want to see what the real weather is right now. And these, this is when radars, weather stations are essential because there is no other way you can tell the current rain and wind without radars and weather stations. So radars are sensors that scan the atmosphere every six minutes and they show you clouds and precipitation in the about 100 kilometers, 200 kilometer radius. Uh, this is very widely used for aviation because you can then clearly see where the thunderstorms are located and so the airplane can still find a way to land uh, by passing all the thunderstorms. It's also very essential for tornado warnings because tornadoes move very fast and radars are the only instruments that can sense them so quickly. In Windy App you can find it on the map then you're going to have, um, I think, two hours of history, and then you're going to have 90 minutes of forecast based on the radars that we produce. And you can play, and, and you can tap the play button and enjoy the movie. 
to see what is moving your way. Uh, it's already operational on iOS uh, and it's coming soon on Android. On radar layers, you can see patterns. And when you see a pattern, you know uh, that, for example, it's a thunderstorm or it's a cold front or it's a warm front. And from like other parts of meteorology, you know that strong winds or sometimes gusts or even squalls accompany thunderstorms, cold fronts and warm fronts. So when you see, you cannot see wind because it's transparent, but you can't see clouds and they form a pattern and then you know what to expect. So for thunderstorms, significant wind uh, squalls and uh, gusts at the bottom of the cloud, then for a cold front, it's usually a long thin line of precipitation and it's a lot, it's quite often thunderstorms. So it's also quite very strong wind uh, gusts and of course the rain, but we're talking about wind now. And when you see a cold front moving, you know you have to know that the wind direction changes also so before front before the front it's like this and then it it's like this so wind direction change is uh, also happening after the front then for the warm front the wind uh, will not be as crazy as for the cold uh, front but still uh, there is there is always a wind increase at the front and it's usually um, many hours of drizzle or rain. This is how you know that a warm front is coming. So that's how it is uh, also pictured on the radar image. Okay, weather stations. I really like this source of information as well because it's the single most accurate real-time wind uh, source of information. In Windy App we have uh, more than 30,000 weather stations that report to us daily and then they report at least once an hour, sometimes more frequently. And in the app, you can check up to 24 hours of history. And I would encourage you to find your nearest weather station or near the, the spot you are looking at. And we have four, four ways you can do that. From the main page, there's the nearest weather station um, tab. Then you can add a weather station to favorites. The same way you can do with the spot, uh, you can find the windmill icon uh, on the map and then at the bottom of each uh, spots forecast there will be three uh, weather stations nearby. Why I think it's so important to look at them because you can see what is what is the trend for the wind. Is it rising? Is it dying down? Was the forecast like saying it was supposed to be 15 knots and in reality it's two knots? Then you might want to rethink your plan for the day. So instead of uh, tapping on each windmill icon on the map, you can see them all at once. You tap on the windmill icon and then you will, you're going to see those bubbles. They represent weather stations and most current wind. So what do, what do I, what would I do with it? On the morning of me going out, I already have a forecast in my head, but I want to see that it, it is actually going the way I'm hoping it is going. I would turn on the weather station mode and then I would switch between weather models and see which one fits this current wind that I'm seeing better. This is easy because we have, it's the same color for weather stations and the same color for the forecast. And you can just see, for example, this weather model is better, uh, for, is, is better at forecasting the wind today in your area uh, than an, a different model. And then you just choose that one and use it for the day. Because if it got the current forecast right, then there's a high chance it's going to get the rest of the day correct as well. Advanced tools for severe weather. I will be talking about the compare chart. It's when we place forecasts for wind from different weather models on one screen. Why we do that? Because in that way you can instantly see what's going on. For example, for today and tomorrow, you can see how confident you can be in the forecast. Let me explain. If all the lines of all the weather models are giving a forecast, for example, of 2080 knots, like on my screen, this means that it's very likely uh, that the wind will be 1820 knots. But then afterwards, 
uh, the lines become a mess, they are quite far away from each other. Some give the forecast as low as 10 knots, others give 30 knots. And this means that probably there's a weather front coming, but the weather models are not sure when exactly it's coming. Uh, or in other words, each model has its own opinion about when it's going to come. So by looking at this, you do not know, you cannot make a decision what exactly the weather is going to be. You just know that the minimum is 10 knots, the maximum is 30 knots, and that it can change a lot. So you have to make a decision based on that. You can choose a different spot or you can wait for the weather forecast to update. This will not take more than six hours. Um, so it's, the picture should become clearer. As for the rain compare chart, this is how I use it. I decide, do I mind if there will be any rain? And if I say I do, then I look at the compare chart. I choose a time when no weather model is forecasting uh, precipitation. That way I know that it's the, the chances of rain are very, very, very small. Um, yeah, and I wanted to mention as a part of our news that we have added uh, our own weather model X3 uh, to the compare chart and now the HRRR model that is the most accurate for the US. Uh, it's now updated every hour. Now, my favorite topic is weather map. I'm a map girl. I mean, I, I can look at the forecast at the spot, but I, I really believe in maps. Why? Because on the map, you can see instantly where the weather is coming from. And even before looking at temperature, uh, at wind, uh, you can get a feeling of what's going to happen. For example, if you see that there is a something coming to you from the north, in the northern hemisphere, you can probably guess that it's going to become colder and drier. And if you see something coming from the south, then it's probably warmer and then more humid. So without looking at any other maps, just or any other forecasts, you one uh, glance at the wind map and then you know what's, what's going to happen. And also you can see fronts. So why is it important to see a weather front? Because after the weather front, the weather changes a lot. It, the wind, there's always strong wind. It can be colder or hotter. It can be humid or less humid, and there will be rain. So these are the kind of events you want to look out for. A tip I have for you is about accumulated precipitation. Uh, this is the layer that I think doesn't get used enough. And it's basically when you sum up uh, of several, uh, for example, you sum up all the precipitation for 24 hours or for 12 hours. Why is it important? Because when you're looking at the precipitation forecast, it's kind of hard to do the accumulation of precipitation in your head and know how much it's going to fall on your exact uh, place. And it could be important because a lot of rain in one place can mean flooding uh, or it can mean a good thing. If you're looking for snow, it could, be, it could mean that you will have some significant snow cover. But also, of course, depending on the soil, you can expect muddy or wet ground. So, for example, if you are planning a hike, then you would want to uh, see accumulated precipitation for, mm, let's say, three days before you're going on a hike. That way, you're going to know what kind of boots do you need, or maybe you need uh, to choose a different place altogether. Another tip for the weather map, why I think it's very important to use it. So weather forecasts are getting better at forecasting, but what they have trouble with is the spatial, the position of local winds and local precipitation. What I mean is, if you look at those two examples on the screen, if you don't see rain or wind in the forecast, but you open the map and then you see that there's wind and precipitation somewhere close to you, then you should expect that it could happen on your spot also. Because it can, the forecast can easily be off by, let's say, 10 kilometers, and that can make the, all the difference. So I would encourage you to always look at the map. I have to mention, I mean, I would love to mention our own uh, weather model that gives the detail of a regional model, but covers the global coastline and gives you a 10-day forecast. 
It's created by our R&D department uh, and it's powered by AI um, and it gives really good results for the coastline. Just to show you an example of what a regional model can do that a global model cannot do. If you see our, uh, the two uh, pictures uh, on, for the GFS, the global model, it gives a very smooth picture. But then X3 can see how the wind is affected by the terrain and you can see the shadows, the wind shadows uh, downstream uh, from islands and peninsulas. And then you can see some extra wind uh, on a terrain on the island. For example, you're planning, you, you want to go from island to island. Then uh, X3 will be um, a great tool because it can literally show you the difference between wind conditions between the two islands or the two sides of the island. And you would know that, for example, tonight here will be a safe harbor and here will not be a safe harbor. So I would really encourage you to uh, check it out. So X3 is a regional model, but uh, our own. But we also have many other regional models like Rome, NAM, HRRR, Icon D2 and UKV2. They have resolution between 1 and 3 kilometers and they allow you to see some local phenomena. Here uh, we have captured breeze. You can see that the wind is coming in uh, from the water to the land and then back. And Arom is detailed enough and accurate enough to capture that. If you need breezes and other local circulations, I would really encourage you to look at the regional models. Bonus tips. So we have created a weather personal advisor service. Imagine this, you are planning a trip or a regatta. And then you think, I wish I could talk to a meteorologist and share my concerns and get his or her perspective on what's going to happen. And now you can do that. What you, you sign up for the service. And then when you have a question, uh, you just contact a meteorologist via WhatsApp. And you just say, hey, um, I'm going from Bahamas to Florida. Um, tomorrow at noon and I wonder what the swell is going to be or uh, do you expect any severe weather. Then the meteorologist analyzes all the weather information for your exact case. The maps, radars, the weather stations, all those rocket science things. And then he or she will write to you, um, so hey, I looked at your situation. It looks like it's going to be this, this and this. Uh, it, they, it could be more detailed or less detailed depending on how you need it. And we've had uh, many happy customers already. And if you feel like it's for you, you can sign up for the service in the description of this video. I'm a meteorologist and a climatologist, so I know that you can use the past data to have an understanding of what the weather is going to be like. So in Windy App, we have a monthly mean winds. That way you can see, for example, winds typical for August or September when you have a vacation. Come up with a spot in mind, then you can go and see the detailed archive to see what kind of weather was there uh, last year, the year before, and uh, or on average for 12 years. For example, I, I want to go somewhere, but I don't understand the seasons of this place. I would look at this picture, I would choose all years and then uh, all months and then wind and there's precipitation at the bottom. And I would clearly see that at first part of the year it's windy and rainy, then it's dry but not very windy and then it's windy and very rainy. If you have questions, you're very welcome to post them uh, to this comments of this video, please explore the description of the video. There are many links um, for you to check out. Of course, I have to say that we have other webinars and lots of materials in our social media. So please like, share and subscribe. You know the drill. I thank you so much for watching. Bye.